I see color. Let's see who's going to win. This is a contest, gentlemen. Who's getting their fish up first? It's always nice to take Sheldon fishing because he's general manager here at Hawks K and he sees all the great fishing and you know he gets out. He's an avid fisherman himself, but it's nice to nice to get him out there and show him some different things. Giant no, red. A red snapper. Dog wow. Guy. <laughs> but then he brought his partner Justin, who's part of the new management team of Hawks K, and so it was great to get him out and really show him what it's all about. You got you a battle there, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on, come on. Oh. I got him, relax. Oh, dude, relax. he just ripped my boat off. Oh, 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 oh. Awesome, look at that big boy. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. You guys ready? Justin, you done much of the fishing down here before? Uh, not down here. Right on. What kind of fishing do you like to do? Um, I've done mostly uh, northern Atlantic. Right on. New York. Uh, What's okay. up, gentlemen? Hey, Rich. Cool, Montauk. Is ready to yeah. go? Yeah. All right. Absolutely. You guys know Rich, so. Hop on. About ready to roll. Go ahead. Got a beautiful day. You guys got anything you want to fish for in particular? No, I'll let you, let you pick. How's that? Well, the weather's so good, I think we'll uh, run out on the ocean a little bit and uh, maybe try the reef. Uh, a lot of action. There's been all kinds of bait. Maybe we can catch some yellowtail snappers or mutton snappers, maybe a sailfish. Uh, who knows? Yeah, I haven't been something. on that site in a while. So. Good. Good. Well, not too often we get weather like this. This is nice. We'll have uh, the chef, chef said uh, he wanted to fish for dinner, so that there's our goal. Catch your dinner. <laughs> So it was a fun day to be able to get out and fish uh, Sheldon and Justin. It's always nice to take Sheldon fishing because he's general manager here at Hawks K and he sees all the great fishing and you know he gets out. He's an avid fisherman himself, but it's nice to nice to get him out there and show him some different things. And this time we had the 26, which is kind of a newer boat for us, and it's really offered a lot of different variety and allowed us to go out and hit some different spots that we haven't done before and uh, have confidence to maybe go a little more offshore than normal. So I was talking to him and he was like, yeah, pretty much every time I go, I kind of want to go back to the, to the bay. You know, and there's so much to do back there and you almost always catch fish back there, but I thought it was a good opportunity to get him out, you know, and do something maybe a little different than he normally does. Yeah, we had the right weather to, to really check the anything that's available box. And, uh, you know, we had Sheldon, who's done a lot of fishing, but then he brought his, his, his uh, partner, Justin, who's uh, who's part of the new management team of Hawks K. And uh, Hawks K is really committed to, to not only a beautiful resort, but they're committed to that marina and the fishermen. So it was great to get him out and really show him what it's all about. All right, Sheldon, here you go. Just give it a little little flip and let it start feeding back. There's the, there's the bottom, see him down there? I see him. We had those prefrontal conditions and knew that you know, this is a good opportunity to get out there. It's gonna be a really beautiful, nice, calm day. So we could pretty much do whatever we wanted to. We decided to start with some yellowtail and it uh, wasn't really happening. Yeah, you know, with, the, with the, the reef fishing there, sometimes it can actually be too clear and too calm. And we had such a beautiful day. I mean, there was no current, there was no wind, and it was, it was brilliantly sunny. So, you know, we could see all the trigger fish and the yellowtails coming up in the chum. And, uh, and literally, it's like fishing in an aquarium. You could see them. We managed to catch a few, and it was a great opportunity to get, kind of get Justin dialed in. You know, he hadn't done much fishing, certainly in the Keys. So we were able to, you know, really get him familiar with the rods of some of the smaller fish. He was able to catch a couple nice yellowtails and get familiar with it. There's the one, the That's target what species. Right, That's what we were looking for. Way to That's go, your Justin. Dinner there. <laughs> there we go. That's your dinner. Nice job, man. That's a nice. Watch his back. He's got a good fin on his back, so kind of right on the belly is good. Nice. Very nice. Target species. That's one of the best eaten uh, Quiet. fish in the ocean right there. You know, my experience with the yellowtail is if they're there, they're coming up, and uh, you may not catch them very well. They could be really spooky. They're a very spooky fish, but it wasn't even happening like that. I mean, we saw like a school kind of way down, but they weren't coming up to the chum. Pretty, pretty obvious we needed to try something different. Let's, uh, let's do something different. This okay. is uh, all the about the, that. The conditions are too nice for the, this. Let's go catch some ballyhoo and then just go fish those out deep. That's been pretty productive and I think it'll be good. Let's go out deep. I'm with you. I like the sound of that. 
So what are we thinking, Justin? Point your right up to all the goes rail. well. You might not have to go to the gym. <laughs> you got your battle there, don't you? <laughs> The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K Resort. Find what lures you. Lawrence, America's number one fish finder. B&W Trailer Hitches, towing adventure. Mercury Marine, go boldly. St. Croix Rods, the best rods on earth. Waypoint, and by Ameritrail. Daiwa. Marathon, Power Pull, and Vibe. We didn't really spend too much time yellowtail. I mean, it became pretty obvious, like no current here, really not seeing what we need to see. And so we didn't really spend too much time doing that, but it was a good opportunity to get everybody kind of familiar with what we were gonna do. and. Uh, we were pretty close to another place where we could drop down and uh, see if we could catch all kinds of fish. So we're gonna set up with these uh, new rod holders and do this drop in here like this. It's cool because we can have them out to the sides like this. Spread a couple baits out, drifting through here for mutton snappers and groupers and stuff. Something that's a lot of fun is just um, especially that 26 is just kind of drifting sideways um, with the current where it's pushing us. And, um, and, and with these new rod holders, these Berwyn um, rod holders, it really allows you to just have a great angle. At, uh, I'm fishing the bottom, these rods are straight down using about a eight ounce weight um, and, and a real long leader, nice long leader so that you catch some mutton snappers or groupers or other things like that. And that's a really good technique. Yeah, you're getting the rhythm. When he fights, you stop reeling, that's perfect. Well, I'll tell you what, these, these rod holders are really <laughs> making it oh, make <laughs> easy. Yeah. That's a nice scenario. We get over the, the spot that we want to hit, and we're marking a lot of fish down there. You can see that there's some predator fish. You can see that there's some bait. As we're using the lure ants, we can see kind of what we're looking at. But I think we are seeing just a cloud of amberjacks. All right, here he comes. Let's go ahead and take it out of the holder. I'm coming behind you. Back this way. Clear. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Nicely done. Yeah, that one's pretty good size. Nice job, man. Yeah. We had a couple of different rigs. We had the, the rig that you described, which is the weight and a longer leader, and then, then the ballyhoo out here. So Sheldon's dropping that, and I think Justin was dropping something similar with a, with a long leader. And uh, this day was perfect because it was almost a straight drop down. I mean, you might as well have been fishing in 10 feet of water. It was 350 feet right to the bottom, crank it up five or six times and just wait. And it didn't take but a second. In fact, a lot of times we were getting bit on the way down. We can get them to bite these vertical jigs. You ever done this? I have not. This is athletic battle fishing. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> well, you'll see. It's awesome, just a double header. Sheldon's hooked up, Justin's hooked up, and uh, you know, this is the first big fish that Justin has ever caught, you know, so you can see, you know, the expression on his face, wow, you know, the power of that fish. And you know, he's a strong guy, obviously works out, he's, he's in great shape, but it's not the power, it's not your strength, it's the technique, you know, and you can overpower. So, so you know, just, just coaching them through that, to let the tackle do its work, let the drag, let the rod fight it, and not to, not, you know, just to take your time and pump and reel down and pump and reel down and, uh, and let the fish fight. I see color. I Go see color. Let's see who's going to win. This is a contest, gentlemen. Who's getting their fish up first? Come on, Justin. Oh, I see color down there. I still hadn't dropped. I might be able to drop and catch one faster than you guys get this thing in. All right. Amberjack. Yeah, nice job, Sheldon. Now we actually have two fish. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Some big fish down there, boys. Right. Just lost my butterfly, Jim. Nice. Nice. Very cool. Boy, that was, that was a good bite. That was a great bite. <laughs> good job, Sheldon. Thank you. Your turn. <laughs> 
Well, I'll let you catch the little ones there. <laughs> See you, buddy. Yeah, he'll go. See you, bud. All right. Okay, I'd say Justin is bigger. Justin wins. Uh-oh, hold on. <laughs> you know, they call the amberjack the reef donkey because it does not want to come in. It's a, it's a fish stubborn. that- Stubborn. Stubborn, man. It's a stubborn, hard-fighting fish and, and really good for what we were doing right there that day. We get people that haven't caught these fish very often, like Justin, and that's what he wants. He wants a good, hard-fighting saltwater fish. Amberjack is a perfect fish for that because there's gonna be plenty of opportunities gonna give him everything he wants and more and and then we can just keep doing it as long until they want to go home and they can get a lot bigger than that wow. that's a good one but just to let you know <laughs> next time we drop you never know what you're gonna get you know right nice on. job man way to go that was awesome hey Sheldon way to go Right about 350 feet here. So we're marking fish all the way up to 150 and stuff. We could uh, bring it up quite a bit off the bottom. Look at that. Tom got bit. I think he's got a nibble. What was interesting about this spot that we fished here is this is a spot that none of us had ever fished before. I'd seen it on the chart. I'd marked it once before. I'd, I, I might have made a drift by there um, in, in the summertime. Uh, with deep drop rigs and, and, and didn't get bit because the current was running too hard or whatever. But as we were bouncing around that, and it was so calm and so clear on the reef and we tried a few different spots that just weren't happening. And this spot that we found, it was out there in 350 feet of water. It's a good one to practice with because so, I want you to do the vertical jig. So hold, put that right between your fingers like that. And even out there, there was no current. So when we, when we marked those fish and we came over that spot, it went from you know 350, 250 and stuff. There was all kinds of fish marking there. There are a lot of fish down there. That, that bottom machine is lit up. Look at it, Tom. It is lit up. And this is an, a, you know, a shipwreck out there, a big structure, but it's a spot that's really hard to fish on a normal day when the current's running or the wind's running. But today was the perfect day for us to try it with no current. Well, just like your biggest twin, right? And at first, you know, we're starting to just kind of see what we're, what we're getting there and comes up amberjacks right away. And, you know, we expected the amberjacks to be there. I still thought that we could probably catch something else. Color. Color. All right. Oh, yeah, look yep. at that. Ooh, that's oh, different. my. Giant no, red. No, a red snapper. Dog wow. Guy. Wow. Wow. Species. wow, look but at that. But that's a nice fish. That's a beautiful, wow. did you fight different? You did. did you feel yeah, like did. you fought different? Wow, look at the size of that red snapper. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you seen a red snapper that that's big. a good one. Nice job, Sheldon. Thank you. Wow. Unfortunately, Look at he has a long time. Go back. Wow. Man, what a whopper red snapper, a true American red snapper, which uh, I wouldn't say is rare. It's, they're, they're a fish that's having a comeback, for sure. At one point, people, not many people caught those. And then over the years, they've just been getting more and more and more of them. And that guy was pretty old because one of the bigger ones that you're going to see See if we can get this air out and let them go. So it's interesting, certain fish have that bear trauma and come up and they get all bloated, um, like the snappers and the groupers. Others don't seem to have a problem, like the amberjacks. They come up Swordfish. and right back in, they swim right down, no problem. But the snappers and the groupers, those are the ones you really have to be um, careful with. So whether it's a venting tool or a descending device, it's, it's imperative that if you're fishing in that depth, that you have that with you so you can release these fish a lot. See ya, buddy. There you go. Go. See ya, buddy. All right, nice job, Sheldon. Thank you, Rich. That's a cool fish. That was really exciting. I mean, that's the that's definitely the biggest red snapper that I've personally seen. You know, we just don't catch them very often down here. Whether we don't fish for them, or you know, they're just not as, as plentiful. But this was man, we hit the mother load of those. And uh, Sheldon, he seemed to be dialed in for whatever reason. I guess he was he getting his bait. Spot. Yeah, he was getting his bait down to the bottom. I think, um, as opposed to the, the amberjacks were probably up more near um, suspended off the wreck. Um, but when he got that value down to the bottom. I mean, bam, he was hooking up with those big red snappers. Oh, wow, big red snapper, big wow! Red. You got the red snapper Woo spot, wee. boy. That is the biggest one I've ever seen for sure. That's amazing, man, nice job. Let me get that pension tool out. Yeah, we're gonna need that for sure. 
Wow, what a fish. Sheldon, you are the snapper man. Yeah, snapper yes. man. Yes. Wrong season. That's all right. That's all right. We've got plenty for dinner. Let's try right there. You know, the rig we were using um, for the dropping rods was really nice. It's, you know, real light St. Croix rod, Mojo salt rod. On the conventional reel, we had the, the uh, Daiwa Saltiste conventional with a leather drag there. That was really nice. You know, we had 50-pound braid on those rods. We put about a 50-pound fluorocarbon leader. I like to have about a 30-foot leader there. It seems to be getting more bites, especially from the snappers and things like that. And then um, the bait that worked the best seemed to be the ballyhoo. Uh, really, everything was eating those. He's going. There he goes. Yes. Success. <laughs> so we get a lot of questions about what kind of rod should I get for inshore fishing. Well, we say that the, the seven foot, eight to 17 pound class rod is about your best all around. You can do a little bit of everything, everything from snapper fishing to, to small tarpon um, and everything in between. And then it comes down to what kind of rod. Well. We've trusted St. Croix rods for quite a few years now and they are just the absolute best quality rods. And they make a variety of different uh, model rods from the good, better, and best type model. Starting out at the, uh, the introductory uh, St. Croix rod, this is the Mojo series, Mojo Inshore, and the quality components from the, the guides to the real seats, just everything is, is super quality. We use these guiding every day, just beating them up. It is amazing how durable and just, gr just a great all around rod and super durable. Have not broken one guide after years of use. So uh, really high quality for a price point. You really can't beat it. Then stepping up to the uh, the next model, kind of the mid mid series here, and this is the one that I use the most, probably my favorite all around, is the uh, Avid series. This is the Avid Inshore, and this is just a little bit lighter, a little smoother, um, just a little higher quality on everything around it. Mid range price point um, guides are a little little lighter, a little smoother, um, just all around better feel. Really good all around rod, cast well. Again, just a same same eight to seventeen pound action. And then stepping up, if you really want to treat yourself to the best, um, this here is, is a lot of fun. Um, the Legend Extreme, the highest quality rod you can go out and buy. You know, it's kind of like getting into the, the fast sports car. You don't need it, but it sure is fun to have. So no matter what your price point is, go with that eight to 17 pound action, seven foot rod, you can't go wrong for inshore. And then just uh, look for your price point, whether it's the good, better, best, St. Croix's got a rod in there that's perfect for every price point. Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin, Hook, Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here, Buff, built for ultimate sun protection, and by Motor Guide, Nikon, Wiley X, Lithium Pros, and Bernoin Rod Holders. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the show. You know, we'd like to get to know you better, carry on the conversation, and the best way to do that is follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, that's a, keep that guy. He's he's good eating. Well, I like the way we shaped the day. We uh, you know went around and it was it was a struggle to get a bite early in the first few spots. You know, really a struggle to get a bite. And then to find that mother load of fish out there on that on that wreck, you know, just made it extra special. And everybody appreciated all the action because it got hot, man. We had doubles, triples, as many as we wanted down there. It was really good. There it, is. there it is. Now I see him. Now that looks. No, that looks doesn't different. look like doesn't look like an amberjack to me. It looks a little wider. wider. A little more stout. You get another red snapper. I'm gonna be quite surprised. That's definitely a snapper of some sort. Is that right? Be a mutton. Be, be a, a mutton. mutton. It'd be nice if it was a mutton. I think. Huh? Another giant red. Oh my gosh! Yeah. That was bigger than the other one! <laughs> that wow! Is, that thing is huge. Oh, <laughs> you barked to at it. me. Where's that venting? It's uh, in that. Uh, oh, wait. I'll grab it for you. Oh, excellent. That, that is that's a incredible. whopper, Sheldon. Wow. That is a whopper. <laughs> that is a whopper. The last one 
that Sheldon caught was the moose. He, he was the he was the granddad of them all. Yeah, it was, you know, I mean, he kept, the first one he caught, I was like, wow, that's a big one. The second one, wow, that's really big. And that last one, that's, that's, that's a monster. I mean, they, these were beautiful red snapper. What an incredible color that, that you know, um, just so reddish pink, just a beautiful color. Something you're not used to seeing out there as far as other fish. Gorgeous fish. And they are great eating, but, but they have a very restrictive season that to protect them so that it's only open for just a few days a year. Um, so, it's a, so it's a catch and release fishery, which is cool. Um, we had fish for dinner, you know, already, but it was really cool to catch those. What do you think? Let's see if we can get him in there as quick as possible. That's how the last one worked nicely. Just a big bent of venting tool. That's incredible. What a nice fish. Very nice. Ooh. That is impressive, my brother. Wow. Sheldon, you are the snapper man. Yeah. yeah, one of the coolest things about that day is just, just you know, we didn't have to go far. You know, we had all the options in the world, leaving here from Hawks Cay, north, south, east, west, it didn't matter. There's, there's great opportunities. And, um, and really here, we just ran straight out, straight offshore, and uh, it's just a, it's a perfect location. Hawks Cay is really unique for the fishermen. You know, to have this incredible marina, which they just, you know, have all brand new docks now. You know, whether you're, you know, you're bringing your boat and staying here, or you're fishing with a fishing guide, um, whether it's fishing or the spa or the restaurants or the pool or whatever, there's just so many things to do that it's just an incredible location to, to spend your time. There you go, Justin. Another one about the same. They're all like bookends, right? Yep. The whole school of them down there. I'm sure there's some big ones, but I bet this is the majority of the size. He let him go. They swim off good. Well, I'll tell well, you that what, was great. You guys did awesome. We found a hot spot there. Good day fishing, man. Really good. Yes. We're 